My name is Michal and it's a pleasure to speak to this many of you. <laughs> so, basically, a few, a few months ago, I was with my friends in the new by restaurant Kuchnia, and we were talking about life, boring school, the typical high school topics. And suddenly the topic of sleep and the deprivation came up when one of my friends, Alex, who here, said, said that for every hour less we sleep regarding the eight-hour mark, we lose eight, eight IQ points. And it started a pretty, pretty vigorous discussion as most of us back there sleep, slept on average five to six hours. So, intrigued by this information, I came home and started to, to serve the internet to, to find any source which would say this, this, this information is uh, true. So today, I would like to share with you what, have, what I have found and how it has affected my life and possibly can yours. So, since we are little children, we are always told to sleep eight hours. And despite not knowing where it comes from, we blindly believe it as it is something said by every other person. And then comes the third point. We attend our biology lessons when, where we learn about the sleep cycles and so on. But out of all of us gathered here, who has actually paid attention during those classes? Okay, so thanks. Uh, that's what I thought. Uh, has that affected your life in any sense? Personally, I think that the only thing which can actually start a change is a controversial statement such as eight IQ points for every hour. So my search has begun. Unfortunately, I was not able to find any source which would fully align with the, with the initial statement. But it doesn't mean it's totally correct. Uh, I came across a book and a statement made by a neuropsychologist, Stanley Carter. Uh, he makes a hypothesis that for the first hour less we sleep, we lose one IQ point, and then next each hour is a multiple of two. So, for instance, if I sleep five hours, I would supposedly lose seven IQ points, and if I would sleep four hours, I would supposedly lose 15, 15 IQ points. And you may ask me, what does intelligence have in common with sleep deprivation? So, I can an answer. Basically, the main two things affected by sleep deprivation are focus and short term memory. And those two factors are the main being tested during the next but at first, it seemed to me that those were just assumptions. So, I decided to dig deeper and came across a series of experiments performed by two US scientists, Mer Merriman and Bronson, and they called the series of experiments Nurture Shock. Uh, they performed uh, many, many experiments in many fields, but mainly concerning sleep and its interpretation. And they really showed me a new perspective on how I perceive my sleep, and I would like to share with you. So first, they took us an average six meter and four meter respectively and put them through, through a series of tests and tested them on multiple occasions. On one of the occasions, the six meter was deprived of one hour of sleep. And on this day, he tested on the same level as the fourth grader did. So we can interpret in the sense that this one hour cost him two grades. And uh, concerning sleep and intelligence and grades, they also did a series of surveys in which they found a very strong correlation between the average number of sleeping hours and the average number of grades, uh, the average grade that the receives. And you, you may see that those are generalizations, but the score were consistent on more than a thousand occasions. So maybe the statement about eight IQ points is a little bit far fetched, but it doesn't seem to some truth. Uh, intelligence is not the only thing affected by sleep deprivation. Have you ever noticed that when you're sleepy, you tend to be more moody, pessimistic? Personally, I did, but I always thought that just how it is. But in a very simplified way, in your brain you have two entities. Amygdala, which is responsible for the negative stimuli, and the hippocampus, which is responsible for the positive or neutral thoughts. And when sleep deprived, your hippocampus is much more affected, and in result, you're not able to focus on the positive side, and you only think about negative memories. And to prove this, those, those studies performed an experiment in which they took a group of sleep deprived college students and ask them to remember a list of words with either positive or negative correlations. And the students could remember 81% of the world words with negative connotations and only 31% of the words with positive ones. So we can see that the correlation here is very strong. And all of this happened between November and December. And since then I tried to prioritize my sleep and average at least seven hours every day. To, to see if I was able to increase my energy levels and how my mood would react. And normally, I tend to be a very moody person on rather the pessimistic side of the spectrum. And since December, I actually noticed an improvement uh, in the sense of how I perceive life and how I am able to see 
see the positive side of many species that I, the negative species I, uh, I encounter, despite being, despite being faced with a lot of stress. So maybe it's just a placebo effect or a sleep transition is actually working. Nevertheless, I'm very positive and happy about this aspect. And I think it's clear now that sleep is a crucial part of our daily routine, which is often overlooked and undervalued. But I have always struggled for, with falling asleep, and it often took me hours. And after trying all the popular methods, such as blinking for five minutes, counting sheep, or the popular social method, none of which would work on me, I decided to create some sort of routine that I would follow every day before I go to sleep. And I, I tried to familiarize my, my body with the idea of falling asleep. So now, every 15 minutes before I go to sleep, I try to think as, as much as possible, in a sense to fade away as much, possible, as much as possible. And at first, I did not see any improvement, but as time passed, I was able to significantly decrease the time I spent falling asleep, and actually gain the sleeping time. And when preparing for this TED talk, I found an article in the Harvard Medical Journal saying that creating a routine can be very beneficial for the time you spend falling asleep. And to sum up, the benefits of consistent and quiet quality sleep are numerous and far reaching. And you can improve your mental and physical health and overall well being. So if I was able to make a change, I'm sure.